We've prepared this video because some of our friends have asked for information on how we assess our dogs. This is our approach and our priorities only, and we respect the opinions of others who have a different approach to us. Our aim is to breed to the standard of the country of origin, the United Kingdom, but we also rely heavily on the illustrations, text and diagrams in the new illustrated Pembroke Welsh Corgi Standard, prepared and published by the Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club of America. The first thing we look at is breed type, the overall breed type. Is this a good example of breed type? Is it what you see when you close your eyes and think of a Pembroke Corgi? Does it embody the essence of Pembroke Corgi? And is it not just a Corgi, but a Pembroke Corgi? Think to yourself, cardigans are curvy, Pembrokes are pointy. Heads. Heads have not been our greatest strengths, but we are improving. We are looking for a happy fox-like expression and an equilateral triangle formed between the tips of the ears and the muzzle. We want the boys to look like boys and the girls to look like girls. We definitely do not want a narrow skull because it seems impossible to improve in future generations. Our model for today's exercise is quiz. Thanks, quiz. The bite should be a tight scissor bite, but we don't get too stressed over the occasional level bite. We don't count teeth. We check for overall robustness next. We firmly, but not harshly, bounce the top line to check that it remains stable under pressure. The front angulation is really important, but I don't find this the easiest thing to assess. Judging the correct leg back of shoulder is straightforward, as is finding the point of the elbow. Finding the joint itself, however, can take some digging if the dog is in well-muscled working condition. We are not convinced by the equilateral triangle argument, and the UK and US standards do not require it. Note the shoulder joint is not the prosternum. The prosternum is the point furthest forward on the body and should be just slightly lower than the connection between the shoulder blade and the upper arm. The upper arm is too short if it looks like the dog has legs on its corners rather than being molded around the chest when it's moving towards you. A rolling front is a dead giveaway for short upper arm. Under ribbing is one of my major obsessions because it is the scaffolding which supports the top line. If it is inadequate in either length or shaping, the top line will collapse under the strain of movement, pregnancy, age or weight gain. Assess the under ribbing by placing your hand between the front legs. It should feel like the keel of a yacht, not like a flat bottom barge. Then follow the ribbing back. The further it extends back, the more reliable the top line will be. The next part of assessing the under ribbing and loin is to measure the angle of ribbing. Locate the end of the top and bottom ribbing and trace the line between them. Aim for a gently sloping line, not one that is steeply angled. The loin is the section between the end of the top ribbing and the hind quarter. Ribbing should be longer than the loin. We aren't fixated on ratios, but less loin gives a more reliable top line. But if it's too short, the dog loses flexibility. Hind quarters provide propulsion. They should be strong, correctly angulated, thick and well muscled. It is possible for hind quarters to be over angulated. If they are overdone in relation to the front construction, the dog will tip forward and break gait unless it is pulled up at the neck with a tight lead, causing the front movement to become stilted. Rear over angulation also causes underpinning, where the hocks are tucked under when the dog is stationary. Hocks should be short, strong, parallel to each other and vertical to the ground. We do not like a racy hock placement where they are set too far back from the tailbone. A PEM should have size and weight in its rump, so it must have firm support from the hocks to avoid hip collapse. The Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a pastoral working herding breed. Front and rear angulation is fundamental to its ability to cover ground e efficiently and easily. 
we assess the functionality of the front and rear construction by extending their legs. If the legs cannot be effortlessly extended while in a low stress stationary position, it is unrealistic to expect it to have the correct ground covering stride. Viewed from the front, the Pembroke Corgi has a distinctive inverted oval shaped chest like an upside down egg. This feature gives optimal bony and cartilaginous protection for the upper body while still providing the capacity for heart and lung expansion while working. The legs should descend from the wrap in a straight line to the ground. Feet should be tight and oval shaped. We will improve on these feet in the next generation. The procedure for puppy assessment is the same as adult assessment, except for the uncertainty involved in them growing the way that they, we thought that they would. These days we tend to have a reasonable idea of how they are likely to develop, but mother nature can be unpredictable. The next section is footage of good movement so that people can see how it is affected by good skeletal construction. While we're watching that, I'd like to talk about some other issues that are dear to my heart, starting with testicles. The optimal time to locate testicles is when pups are still influenced by the mother's hormones, that is, before they are 48 hours old. We find the boys are usually entire then. The difficulty in finding them when they are older is more often caused by a lack of size than short cords. Testicle problems can be overcome in several generations with dietary changes. This video has concentrated on conformational assessment, which is only part of the equation. Most of the dogs any of us breed will live in pet homes. Dogs with health problems that adversely affect their quality of life are not sound. Soundness is also described as being fit for purpose. In the past, Pembroke Corgis have had a bad reputation for aggression, some of them quite deservedly. Some are also timid. If we are forced to choose between the two temperament faults, we do not tolerate aggression. PEMs are supposed to be intelligent and curious dogs. In recent years we have noticed a few stupid and placid ones appearing in our program. Fortunately we have been able to correct this within a generation or two at the most. More worrying, though, is the loss of working attitude, which seems to take longer to put back into the mix if and when it is lost. We are not interested in breeding generic dogs, especially those that look like corgis but act like golden retrievers. Breeding priorities. This is so important. Before you buy a dog, bitch, puppy or do a breeding, we strongly suggest less experienced breeders spend quality time with pen and paper first. List all the breed characteristics that you can think of, good and bad, and order them in your own priority list. If you don't know what is important to you and what you want, how will you know where to look for it or recognise it when you find it? To those people who have watched this far, we thank you for your interest and hope you find it useful. To those that have advised, supported and encouraged us to make it, we hope you like it. Thank you.